Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Uh, this week I have been out enjoying one of my favorite campsites. Um, it's just been a fantastic time and I had no intention on making a video or doing any modifications on my trailer. But I want to speak to you about a specific issue I was having this week that I know I'm not alone in. Um, I'm on the forums, I'm on the Bushwhacker Facebook groups, and this is an issue specific to my model of Bushwhacker that a lot of folks have been having. Now, I wanted to take some time to uh, address this project down the road, but it turns out I was able to do it out here camping using nothing but a Leatherman. So I'm gonna recommend that you use proper tools to do this, but you won't believe how easy it is to fix the water pump switch on our bushwhacker. So let's check it out. So the issue that we fixed was we moved the water pump switch from here to up here. Now this is where the new bushwhackers have their water switch, but the actual, uh, the majority of bushwhackers came with the water switch down here. Now in order to understand what we're doing before we make this switch, it's important to make a couple notes here. Um, Braxton Creek continually makes modifications to their trailer. Um, it's not so much that they wait for model years, like 2021 is different from 2020. They're continually changing things. A lot of times this is to make the trailer nicer. They move the antenna that was on top so you could use the roof rack but the majority of the time it's to make the trailer cheaper. The reason this switch ended up here was because the original Bushwhacker campers came with a Dometic sink stove combo. This unit costs about four times as much as the unit that's coming with these now, this Flame King and the cheap plastic sink. Um, it would be nice if they would change their brochure or their website because they stopped including these Dometic stoves like 18 months ago. But if you go on the website, it'll still say that Bushwhackers come with a Dometic stove and a Dometic sink. The other uh, change they made, which is a little bit of a side note to this project, is that they changed from high density insulation on their trailers, foam insulation, to fiberglass, which is a huge downgrade and they're also still advertising high density foam insulation. All right, now back to the switch. The reason I'm making this move has to do with the fact that the new Flame King has a lid that hits the switch. When you're cooking, it makes it very hard to access and it trips the switch um, every time you're back here trying to cook. So we really do want the switch up here. It's made a huge difference. Uh, a few days ago, I was in the same camping spot. It was Father's Day, came back here to make clams and the whole time I was cooking and the whole time we were eating dinner, my water switch was turned on. Now I run on solar and batteries. When I got back, I saw an enormous drop in my battery and knew something was wrong. So something had to be done and let me show you how we did it. Because I was out here on a one week camping trip, I actually didn't have any real tools with me. So I took my Leatherman and I began with the knife on the Leatherman to just kind of etch back and forth on the wall. Uh, in about 45 seconds, I put a decent sized drill hole in the wall. Obviously a power drill would work better for this, but I think it does demonstrate how easy this project is. From here, I actually used the saw on my Leatherman to cut a small rectangular hole for the new placement on the switch. The first thing I did was check to see if there was an open pathway to run the wires to a higher position. Once I realized there was, I measured the original cutout for the switch with my Leatherman and traced it out above where I wanted the switch to be. What you see that I'm doing here is actually using the file on the Leatherman to just smooth out the edges of the cut. Of course, if I had more tools, I could do this process a lot more quickly. Next, I mocked up the switch by placing it into the opening and made sure it fit securely. From here, you can actually see that we did a better job with the Leatherman than Braxton Creek did with the original job. I even took some time to clean up by using an old piece of duct tape I had in my car to clean up the sawdust. If you're looking for better instructions here than how to use a Leatherman, check out my video on installing the switch on the inside and all of the same steps apply. 
Next, I pop the cover off the switch and I'll put some photos in here that I took while I was doing the project. But there was actually about 18 inches of extra wire attached to the switch. This is gonna make this job really, really easy. Now, if you don't have all of that extra wire, you can open up this under sink storage here and actually pull the wire down and untangle it from the other wires that are in there and use a string to drop down below and pull the wire back up. This is gonna give you the much needed slack to do this job. Now, I dropped a string down this hole and I fished it through the old hole. From here, it was really easy to chase these wires up. I kept the female spade connectors intact. Once I pulled the wires out, it was as simple as pushing it into the back of the switch and having the new switch here. The whole project took less than five minutes using nothing but a Leatherman. Now, when I get downtown, I'll probably pick up a black blank switch cover to make this look a little better. Uh, for now, I actually had an old white one in the car and I'll install this over the hole. Now I can use my stove control, no more spilling and spraying water or killing my batteries. I really hope that uh, if you have one of the same Bushwhacker models from me, that you're able to take advantage of this super easy mod. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Throw me a like and subscribe if you like the video.